Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So it's a new year and that means it's time to set some art goals. I already made a video going over my business goals for the year and the next phases of my art career, but I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the goals that I have for my creative practice. 2023 was a really solid year for me as an artist. I made quite a few pieces I'm really proud of and I can look back at my work from 2021 and 2020 and see just a truly insane amount of improvement. It's difficult to notice this in the moment, I think, but looking back on some of my older work is really like night and day now. And I'm really excited to see what changes 2024 brings and I don't know, just Realizing your potential as an artist and feeling that growth, it's a really good feeling. But before we get into the goals that I'm setting for the year, I want to talk a little bit about the painting that I'm working on that you're going to be watching throughout this video. I shared the beginning of this piece in a previous video, but you're going to see the entire process this time around. And this particular piece is a study of a landscape painting done by Eric Bowman. Eric Bowman is a widely celebrated and renowned artist whose work focuses on the American Southwest. Basically, the place that I've been living, California. He's been featured in museums and galleries the world over, and I first stumbled across his work on Instagram. I was pretty immediately drawn to the way he simplifies his subjects, the comprehensive grasp he has on color, and his expressive brushwork, and I really wanted to try my hand at it because I really want my work to look like this. I think that he has this amazing, just innate quality to his work that I, I really love, I really am drawn to, and so I wanted to try my hand at it. But I also want you to know that I don't sell studies like this that I do of the work of living artists and that all credit for this piece should go to Eric. I am just studying it as a learning opportunity, all right? With that in mind, I started this study on an old panel I had just kind of lying around in my studio that had a very vibrant orange layer of paint on it and I was understandably skeptical of whether or not I would make this work, but I think it turned out really good in the end. And the first half of this process was mostly me just trying to get the drawing right, blocking in everything and then slowly adding in those bold colors that you see in the original. So if you are looking at the painting right now and you're like, I have no idea how this is going to end up looking like that, just bear with me. We're going to get there, I promise. And so while I work on that, let's chat about my goals. The first goal that I really have for 2024 is just a repeat of the goal that I've always had, which is to study the artists that I admire. That's what we're doing in this video. We've done this in a bunch of videos before of some truly incredible artists. And I have some different artists that I want to study from in this coming year. The first one is Alexander Babish. I don't know if that's how you say his last name. He is maybe the most celebrated Russian landscape painter alive today and probably my favorite living landscape painter, if I'm gonna be honest. His mountainscapes are just unparalleled and his grasp on brushwork is just incredible. He lives in um, this mountain range in Russia and just the way that he depicts mountains is truly spectacular. Look him up online. You will not regret following his work. It's just so gorgeous. I feel like he has just this great grasp on how to simplify these really complex subjects. I really struggle with paintings where there are a bunch of trees in the distance or on the slope of this mountain and just tackling all of these like many tiny forms is difficult for me. And the way that Babish simplifies everything while maintaining this amazing grasp on color and brushwork in this strong composition, it's not overly simplified. It, all of these angels are still there. That is really really interesting to me and I really want to take a look at his work and how he does it and do some studies. The other artist that I want to study is Sidney Lawrence. Sidney Lawrence was a very famous Alaskan landscape painter. I would consider him pretty similar to the Hudson River School, if you know who those guys are, but Sidney Lawrence has largely been forgotten by popular history, like popular modern art, and it's tough to find information about him online, which is really unfortunate. I'm often really frustrated by the lack of information and portfolio, like just pieces available of some really famous historical artists on the internet. It just, it seems like people haven't really done the work to make this available to the public, and I think this is a total shame. Anyway, there is much less of a portfolio to study from when it comes to Sidney Lawrence, and I'm probably going to have to make some inquiries at museums, but I want to do the work because I think that his work is really worth studying and I, I want to learn more. The other artist that I want to study is Julia Hart Beers. Julia Hart really suffers from the same problem as Sidney Lawrence. She was the most successful commercially 
successful artist of her era, an incredibly talented painter from the Hudson River School, one of the only female painters in the Hudson River School, but she's infuriatingly been forgotten by history. Her Wikipedia page is bare bones. I hate it. It's, a, it's, a, it's so annoying. Human history has an enormous wealth of these amazing, talented people, and the fact that they're not celebrated more, the fact that people just haven't tried to preserve knowledge of their existence, it's it makes me angry. The last artist that I want to study is Richard Schmidt. I've talked about him a fair bit before. He died a few years ago during the pandemic, and he was an incredibly talented modern realist landscape painter. His work is wonderfully expressive, but also very precise. And I have a few of his books that I purchased, but in 2024, I really want to do at least a few studies of his work. I feel like my recipe for growing as an artist so far has been to go on adventures, take my own reference photos, come back to original paintings. But in between all of that, to do studies of the artists that I really admire and take lessons away from from that experience to use those copies as learning opportunities. And that's what I'm doing in this particular painting as well. The second big goal that I have for my art in 2024 is to create stuff specifically for products or my portfolio. So portfolio pieces really excite me. <laughs> like wine labels, hard cider, spices, perfume, shampoo and conditioner, hand soap. I want to make packaging and labels for these things. I know it sounds really weird, but I am just genuinely so excited by the idea of walking into to a store and seeing my landscape paintings on the packaging for products. I think it would be so cool if you could buy a candle that smelled like, um, I don't know, like a pine forest and then see my painting of a little pine forest on the packaging. That would be so cute and so good. Just the idea of being able to like walk into a meeting and give someone a bottle of wine that I'd signed the label of is really interesting to me. And this is obviously a long-term goal. I'm not going to be able to achieve, you know, the getting my artwork on products and stores by the end of this year, but I don't want to sit around and just wait for opportunities like this to find me. I want to go out and make these opportunities myself. The amazing thing about YouTube and all of you is that this has opened a lot of doors for me and I want to open more doors, but to keep those doors open, I should have something to show as an example when I reach out to brands. And that's what I want to do a little bit of at least this year. Not like a ton, but I think it could be kind of cool. Let me know if that's something that you would be interested in seeing me like, do videos of or something. But before we talk about the rest of my goals for 2024, I do want to take a minute to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They have been an incredible partner for the channel and have an enormous amount of value to offer for artists. Squarespace is an award-winning website platform that allows you to design a beautiful website for selling your art, displaying a portfolio, hosting courses, and even writing a blog. Using their Fluid Engine feature, you can drag and drop images and text and videos and a whole bunch of stuff to your heart's content. I was able to design a website that I'm really proud of in just a few hours. And it's not only pretty to look at, but easy to change when I want to promote a new print collection or my email list or whatever new thing I'm working on. Squarespace makes it really easy to display your work, sell digital or physical products, and really be a hub for everything that you do online. Their plans are affordable and their customer service is award winning. You can get 10% off your first order of a website or domain by going to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and using code Kelsey Rodriguez at checkout. You could also just click the link in the description. Thank you again to Squarespace. And now let's get back to talking about my goals. So the third goal that I have for 2024 for my art is to genuinely try plein air painting, like more than just once to give it a serious go. I really want to become more accurate at drawing from life and not just using photo references with grids. Photoshop is my best friend when it comes to my art right now. And while this is totally fine, well and good, I think I'm losing something by not testing myself with plein air painting. There is an opportunity for growth that yes, would be hard. It would be difficult. It would be very challenging, but I think it's worth doing. I want to push myself a little bit more this year, especially when it comes to drawing and being able to accurately reflect what I'm seeing in real life onto the surface. And I think that planner painting would be a really good challenge for this. And I think throwing myself in the deep end might honestly be the way to go. I'm hopefully going to go on a couple of interesting trips this year. And I think that taking the chance to, you know, do some plein air stuff there could be really fun. But I also think that I could totally get away with doing plein air stuff just around the neighborhood that I live in. I live in a pretty nice, like, suburban neighborhood with my seven roommates um, in this house. And there are a ton of really cool houses nearby. There are some mountains nearby we could visit. I guess not mountains, the Berkeley Hills I could visit. And 
there are trails up there. I, I don't know. I should just do it. I should just go up there. I should try planner painting. I could just take an Uber. It wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I, I don't know. I want to give it a go. I think it's a skill worth having. I don't know. I just really want to be the best artist that I can be, you know? The last goal that I have for this year is to really take and work from my own reference more often and to rely less on reference photos from ArtStation and Flickr and Pinterest and all that stuff. And I don't know. I just find that as I get older and more experienced, I've become a lot more particular about the things that I want to paint and the things that I feel called to do. And I think this means that I should just suck it up and take my own art references. And fortunately for me, that basically entails going on cool adventures to fun places. And I want to do that. I want to share that. It would be really cool if this channel turned into like 25% travel art channel. That would be really interesting. I think it would be a little bit different compared to the other the other art channels on the platform. I think it could be really fun. Like I've been thinking about doing this storm chasing photography trip. They have like a bunch of different options, but I've been thinking about doing this sometime this spring. And I, yeah, it's a lot of money. I could probably pay for it with a sponsor, but like imagine me in a van taking pictures of supercells and tornadoes just to paint them later in my studio. That would be so cool. Like the, the trip itself is obviously a really cool experience, but just being able to get out there and take pictures of these incredibly interesting like phenomena in the natural world and then going back to your studio and painting them yourself, that sounds so rewarding. You have full control over how the reference photo turns out, at least as far as your camera is concerned. And it, oh, it that's just so, it's so neat. It's so neat. A part of me always worries about making public goals like this because the reality is that as much as I talk about setting small goals and implementing habits and having realistic expectations, the truth is that I move slow, I paint slow, and I probably take myself and my work a lot more seriously than I should. And my eyes are a lot bigger than my stomach when it comes to new projects. And I, I don't know, I'm very ambitious as a person and my ability to realize these ambitions sometimes falls quite short of how I imagine them in my head. But I wanted to to make this video because I want you guys to know that I am dedicated to improving my skills. I want to be the best artist that I can be, not just in terms of business, but in terms of like actual skill. A common critique of my work on this channel is that I often come across as too business focused and analytical with my work. And then I don't often talk about my inspirations or what drives me to create. But the truth is that I am just always this analytical. This is just what my brain is like. Making work for perfume labels or packaging going on storm chasing trips might sound really weird and crazy and maybe even like lame in the, the packaging case to you. But it's interesting to me. My work isn't really, I don't know, it's not deeply symbolic. It doesn't have intrinsic political messaging. It's just there to look pretty. I just want to make stuff that looks cool and I want to have good experiences. I want my work to transport you to a place and convey a particular feeling, of course, but I also just want it to be an expressive, attractive interpretation of the thing that I'm seeing in the photographic reference or in real life. And I am always thinking about how to improve or looking back on what works and what doesn't and the lessons that I can take away from that, both in terms of my business and my art. My brain just like, it... <sighs> It does the numbers thing. I am I am always thinking about analysis and improvement and whatever, and I don't think that I would ever be able to just stay static. Though that's not a bad thing. I guess my real passion is in painting as a technical skill. It comes from this burning desire to achieve a certain standard with my work and to be able to successfully emulate the artists that I admire and to be able to paint the natural world with confidence, to manipulate light and color and the paint itself to tell a story with a particular place. And I'm really excited by this idea of making art for brands. I don't know, it just sounds so cool to me. I want my work to be experienced. That's why I share the process. That's why I'm sharing this process, though this is not my work again, this is Eric Bowman's work. But if there's really one thing that I've learned from being online, it's that I cannot get caught up in the conversation people are having about my work after it's out there. So I guess if I were to have one major final, final overarching art goal for this year, it'd be to stop focusing so much on what my audience thinks about my work or my artistic philosophy or whatever, and to just unapologetically make the things that I'm passionate about and pursue the projects that I'm interested in. If I just do that, everything else will fall into place. That's all I have for this video. Thank you so much again to Squarespace for being a sponsor of the channel and, and friendly reminder that I have just updated my in-print shop to reflect a bunch of new pieces. So go check that out. Go buy some prints if you want to. And I am currently developing a really awesome product that I am so excited to share with you guys. I genuinely cannot wait. So 
If you want to hear about that when it goes live, consider signing up for my email newsletter. There is more videos in the screen right now if you want to go watch those. Hit the like button, do all the things, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.